Okay, guys, once again, welcome uh, to this uh, CRMX uh, webinar at the Lumen Radio headquarters. Uh, we're, uh, this will take approximately 40 45 minutes. And uh, questions, we'll, we'll take care of them after we're done uh, because we can only do one thing at a time. Very nice. That's, that's how we work. Um, yeah, so the uh, agenda for today is uh, we're going to explain for you what CRMX is. Uh, we're going to run through the product line. Uh, we're also going to do a quick uh, how to set it up or link and unlink. Super simple. We're going to talk about our Supernova management software. Uh, Joseph will do a fantastic presentation of uh, the Moonlight and the app and apps that comes with it. Mm. We're also going to talk about radio and best practice, and of course, uh, some pitfalls or problems that could occur. Mm. So let's uh, let's uh, let's do it. Yeah, sure. So, what is uh, CRMX? Uh, that's our invention. CRMX. That's our name for wireless DR DMX. It's a patented technology that we invented here at Lumen Radio. It's working on the 2.4 gigahertz band, and uh, we'll go into more details on how it works later on. But for now, you can just remember that CRMX, that's wireless DMX. Uh, it has fulfills all the specification of uh, DMX, full refresh rate and uh, latency as well. Uh, it also supports RDM, remote device management, which we'll, which we'll show you. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, um, that's CRMX in short, just wireless DMX. Our name for it, yeah. And then you then could do a small presentation. Or should I do it on Moonlight just oh. to show, tell you a little bit? But we're going into produ products, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so first up is the the Moonlight. Uh, it's our battery powered uh, uh, flex unit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll come back to the more specifications later on, right? Yeah, we'll go into depth more about yeah. how to yeah. use it and so on. These yeah. are just. The product yeah. yeah and also we have should we share uh, no we can do that later yeah, yeah. so we have the outdoor boxes uh, yeah. this one is a flex unit mm. we have the slim mm. that comes in transmitter and receiver for indoor use we have uh, a tx2 with rdm flex unit with rdm rdm, RDM. receiver uh, with RDM and a transmitter without RDM and also a receiver without RDM. Yeah, so there are several different options on the, on the, on the different units that we have depending on what you're actually looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think it's, yeah, it should be yours. Uh, <laughs> That, that fellow over there, I think. Yes, and we're also going to talk about this guy, this little uh, OEM module, but uh, more, more on that later. But uh, that's what we can use for integration as well. Yeah. Um, should we start with uh, going through the, the different boxes, how to operate them and uh, how they actually function? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. How you can show it a bit more. Yeah, so uh, we can start with the TX2, the two universe transmitter. Uh, you can see the, hopefully you can see the displays of the uh, unit here. We have port A and port B. We have the linking button and the indicators of uh, signal strength, for example, if RDM is on, DMX, and if there's an RF link. On the back side, we have uh, Ethernet uh, port A, port B, and also the main voltage. Super simple. For the, the um, on all RDM flex or the flex units uh, and TX with RDM. We have uh, uh, Ethernet connection and also, of course, on, uh, yeah. So with RDM uh, transmit units and flex units, we have uh, Ethernet connection to be able to connect it to uh, to our Supernova software. 
Uh, yeah, uh, what, uh, what could be said more about this? Uh, yeah, so you can, the, the data you can feed them. Yeah. So, yeah. Of course, so, um, please. It's possible to, of course, hook them up with, uh, with their regular GMX connectors. But also, if you're using Ethernet, you can use any kind of, well, not any kind, but most typical protocols based on Ethernet that is available. So these boxes will actually do the conversions from streaming ACN, from ArcNet, from uh, many different other networks into DMX streams. So it will, it will output DMX, what, but you can feed it with many different options. And you can set what, what kind of feed you put into it in the Supernova software. So they're quite capable. They're not just DMX, they're uh, quite a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, Joseph. Mm -hmm. uh, also for the outdoor units. Um, the, the vandal proof. Drive. Yeah, yeah, the, the sturdy one. Uh, the, the outdoor FX and outdoor RX are uh, both uh, IP67 rated and vandal proof. Uh, the same display as on the indoor boxes. So whenever you tried one of the indoors, you can use the outdoor also. What is important with the outdoor versions is that they're, uh, they're made for fixed installation. So there's no XLRs on them or so. So they're ma made for architectural or projects. More, yeah, yeah, more architectural projects. That's perfect usage for them. Yeah, also comes with RDM. And also we have the slim. Uh, transmitter and receiver, uh, IP65 rated, uh, not so vandal proof, perfect to fit inside of a lighting pole, for example. Uh, that's why they're made. They also come with Dolly, so they have a conversion from DMX to Dolly. Uh, so for all, all you guys out there, which I guess is not too many working with Dolly, this could be a good one. Mm -hmm. So what's the, um, the linking procedure? Yeah, like? the linking. Yeah, should we try the linking already? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. So should we show it on Supernova? It's Supernova. Or are we too, are hmm. we too early on that? Perhaps we should just, uh, yeah, it's super simple on these boxes to do the yeah. linking. It's Yeah, okay. It's yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. Basically, it's a one button interface. It's not that hard to, uh, to figure out what to do. You have one button that's used for linking and unlinking. So simply, if if this device was to be powered up, you would simply press the button and it will link to all available receivers in range. Um, and to unlink, you simply hold the button. You don't need to do any settings, you don't need to configure it, how to operate and where, or uh, frequencies or channels. You don't need to do any of that. Our CRMX take care of that. You just press the button. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and also if you, um, so linking one, one push of a button, mm -hmm. if you want to unlink, for example, a receiver from that uh, transmitter, we have the same button. In this case, you just hold the button for three seconds and it will be unlinked. Yeah. We're probably going to show that uh, yeah. in Supernova. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so super simple to link and, and one important or a couple important things is that one receiver, RX, can only be linked to one transmitter. So a, a receiver can only be linked to one transmitter. So keep that in mind. So if you want to change a universe or so, you have to unlink it and then push the button on the transmitter to find that. Mm -hmm. And the transmitter can, of course, be, be linked to, it will be linked to all uh, receivers within range. Yeah. Uh, and the range, of course, <laughs> is, uh, yeah. I mean, in best case, uh, wife's happy, sun is shining, you know, all good. A thousand meters mm -hmm. uh, for, for the standard antennas uh, or yeah. for the standard boxes. You can, of course, use different antennas if you're interested yeah. in that. Uh, we don't have one here. No, we didn't. Yeah. No. Um, and also, um, you can... Um, yeah, so we have, uh, for, for indoor uh, high-gain antennas, mm. there are uh, a 5 dBi antenna for the outdoor boxes and slim. We have a 6 dBi antenna and also a 12 dBi directional antenna. Mm. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about how to align them later on. Mm. Uh, and also, uh, 
good thing to know about the, the moonlight about range. It's mm. a, in the same circumstances as before. We have a 300 meter range approximately. Mm. Yeah, because you can't really align the antenna, so no. you can't. You could potentially get quite a long range, but uh, we recommend that, or we usually say that it's about 300 meters because you can't really align the antenna properly. No. And it's not meant for long distances. No. Yeah. Mm. Um, I thought I should mention the, the OEM. Yeah. Because, yeah. Important. Um, because this is what we actually put inside all of our devices. So this is our TMO2 module. It's a radio module. It uh, features uh, antenna connector and you can power it up uh, and uh, it will uh, receive or transmit and it will uh, output these on the DMX lines or get input from DMX lines here. You control it using an SPI bus and this is what is used in many different products. For example, our Moonlight. Ooh. Oh, we, let's Try to do like this. Do we see anything? Oh, there. A nice big light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually where uh, part of our modules are integrated into. Uh, a lot of different OEMs and manufacturers of lighting equipment put this, these kind of modules inside the fixtures so that they uh, come standard with wireless DMX. So you've probably seen that uh, RS Orbiter is using it, Astera is using it, and uh, many different others are integrating our technology into their fixtures directly. So you don't need to always use these boxes. It depends on the use case. You can actually get fixtures already integrated with CRMX from the, uh, from the beginning. Yeah. Or you can hook up a, a Moonlight if you want to sort of the market fit a fixture, but yeah. So these TMO2 modules are available uh, also from us, and uh, usually if you're, you're interested in this kind of uh, work, you, uh, you get a development kit from us, you, and uh, yeah, you talk to us regarding that if you're interested. Um, yeah, so that's our, um, the, our um, yeah, OAM module. Yeah, so should we, uh, should we go uh, and try to uh, link and unlink and stuff like that? Do some supernova work. Do some supernova. Yeah, uh, yeah. we have our own uh, management software, uh, mm -hmm. Supernova. We, uh, mm -hmm. And I think you should uh, download that from our website. It's free. It's, free. it's very powerful. And yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see how it looks. Yeah. I'm here. This is Supernova. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm getting old, so I don't see. I have to step in closer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, as you see here, we have one box. Yep, we have the transmitter uh, that is connected with, uh, with the Ethernet to your computer. Yes, to our office network, actually. Yeah, yeah. and the office network, yeah. yeah. And uh, we, uh, if, uh, if we, we can see it connect, it's connected to, to uh, one Moonlight and one Nova uh, FX, FX yeah. in receiver mode. Yeah, I forgot to say that, sorry guys. <laughs> Ah, the FX. What the, is the, FX? Uh, what is FX? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the FX is uh, a flex unit. Sorry for that. Uh, so it can be both a transmitter uh, uh, or a receiver. Yeah. Yeah, so you change the mode either with a button or in Supernova. Mm. Uh, the indoor flex can be either a receiver or a transmitter. Mm. In that case, forgot to say this, but okay. Uh, we have the outdoor flex. The outdoor flex is, uh, can also be a repeater. Mm. We don't need the repeater function indoors uh, due to range. Uh, outdoors, yeah, uh, we usually use a repeater uh, where we're coming up to long, long, long ranges. Mm. In this case, uh, so this one can be a transmitter, receiver, and a repeater. Mm. Okay. Now we know what a flex unit is. That's connected <laughs> yeah. here in Super. So this is a flex unit. Yeah. Um, and yeah. You can actually see that this is an indoor flex. You can see the, some information about it, what software version we're running. Uh, yeah, w this is an indoor flex, so we can make it a receiver or transmitter and yep. do the settings here. Mm -hmm. uh, should we jump into the, to the transmitter? Yeah, sure. Yeah, in here you, oh, you have the same, uh, uh, you can see the same, you can name the units, for example, if you want to have special names for the units. Uh, you can also um, no. Uh, well, you can also change uh, the output power. Uh, 
it's uh, in uh, it's set to uh, normal in this case. Mm -hmm. That's how high we can go in in Europe, uh, or let's say you can go with high uh, only in only in the U.S. Yeah. So uh, don't go there. You might get mm -hmm. uh, the government might be a little bit sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else? We can identify devices. Yes. Yeah, we can. No, you'll not no, see that. But if we push on that identify button, all the lights, all the LEDs indicators will start flashing. So, okay, this is the one. Mm. Good to know. Uh, we can also yeah. show the coexistence. coexistence. Yes, we'll go more into details what this is later on, but this is live frequency spectrums. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, and uh, and also yeah. change since this is a, a TX2. We have two universes. You can mm -hmm. uh, see the different ports here. You can set what kind of feed you will feed it. So, for example, port A will be fed with Ethernet. What would you like uh, for this flavor? So here you see the different possibilities from uh, that you can feed the box with. Streaming ACN, ETC net, show net, path port. Yeah, yeah, a lot of different ones. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, let's go out of that. And should we? Okay, we we can start to link things now. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I can do this. Push the right button because there are two buttons here. Yeah, and we were <laughs> on we were on A, right? Yeah. This is A, yeah. yeah. So and this is B. So I'm just gonna push this. Simultaneously, I'm going to show you on this where I'm going to push. Do you think I'm able to do that? No, no. I'll try anyway. So, one push of a button. This is this is almost live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And then we'll see outside of the picture, I guess. No, we see, we see your okay. We see your ass. So <laughs> good, good for you. In ten seconds, you will have the moonlight. Uh, Oh, oh, all of a sudden it appears here. We got two moonlights. Yeah, we got moonlights lying around in the office. So uh, yeah, you can okay. uh, expect a few moonlights to appear. So now we have two okay. more moonlights. Okay. Yeah. Right yeah. Good. Yeah. But well, there's more to be found. Yeah. So let's do a discovery, perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Link on and off for the announcement. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so since we're at the Lumen Radio office, you can expect quite a lot of CRMX networks to go up and down all the time. Uh, so we need to unlink the moonlight and uh, yeah. link it again. Here you go. Yeah, there's always someone hogging the network here. So within 10 seconds, you will be up, uh, linked. It will link. Yeah. Yep, yeah. and here we go. We're good to go. And right. it will show up on Supernova. In a while, but we can do a discovery because we want to find what it's looked at. Oh, there it is. That's our latest moonlight. We can do an incremental discovery here. Oh, there, there we go. Quite quick. Yeah. This is. Yeah. So now we found a moonlight that is connected uh, to a Roby fixture, uh, as you can see on the on the screen. We have mm -hmm. a we have a wireless signal between the the transmitter and the moonlight, and then. The the moonlight is connected straight into the Roby fixture. Yeah, and we can see the Roby fixture here. Yeah, so we can double click that one. And in here you can do some yeah small stuff, but uh, you can uh, since it's RDM we can uh, see the oh you can set the start address for example okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can do a lot of different things. It, this depends on the manufacturer. Yeah. So Roby are very good when it comes to RDM. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can do all kinds of settings and uh, stuff here. Yeah. So talking about RDM, we can can start by uh, yeah, we can start with sensors. Yeah. Show them the sensors. So now you can see that uh, okay, I guess it's temperature. Yeah, uh, three different temperatures at the in the fixture. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can uh, go to a virtual console where we can uh, do some testing to see yeah. that things are connected and working properly. Yeah. So we're. So this is actually a typical where some manufacturers don't, uh, if they haven't the right. Uh, they have the right 
Nothing's happening? No! no. <laughs> <laughs> Live issues, nice. Well, looks good, haven't we? Yeah. I'm going to pull the fun. Sorry. Hmm? How strange. Yeah, that's real strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have figured it out. Anyway, from here you can do the testing uh, to see that, okay, we're linked and uh, you try the colors and pan and tilt and so on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we can start a uh, new. Yeah. No, it doesn't want to do that. It did it before, of course, but yeah, yeah. since we're live now, <laughs> shit happens. Yeah. Strange. Mm? Uh, okay, we can also, we have uh, in Supernova, we have the DMX map uh, up here, where, or where you see the manufacturer, where DMX start addresses and footprint, of course, and so on. Well, and here's the, here's the map. Yeah, port uh, A and port yeah. B. Oh, there's a Roby. Yeah. It's there anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we got the fixture and we got the information, so I'll blame Roby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll blame someone else, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So for linking and unlinking, it's super simple. Uh, and usually when you use the Supernova software to, to do your testing and uh, it's and monitoring, of course, where you, because you can also see the link strength and, and mm. so on. Uh, should mm? is it supernova or is it uh, the time for for the coexistence or? Yeah, sure. So we can actually show the code. We've we've shown you the coexistent. We'll go more into details about that uh, when we go more into radio details. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So let's move into the moonlight instead. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll switch over here. So this is the moonlight. Uh, it's a battery powered device uh, that you charge using the micro USB connector on it. It has two DMX connectors, so both in and out. Uh, it has a one button interface so that you can uh, do the link and unlinking here. Um, but it's also usable with Bluetooth. So this little guy has Bluetooth and CRMX. So you can feed it with Bluetooth, uh, DMX over Bluetooth, for example. It will output this both wirelessly and on the DMX connectors. So this is a quite nifty interface to many different things. So there's only one radio module for both uh, radios, both for DMX and uh, Bluetooth, and that's yeah. Pretty unique, so you and don't need any bridge or something like that to, yes. to make it and, work. and it doesn't interfere with itself. So since we we control both the Bluetooth and the CRMX, it, it will not interfere with itself. So uh, both work at the same time in the same spectrum and everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my of god. Of course. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. Okay, we got a visitor. We can't say no to this guy. Yeah, sorry. He he, he just comes in here from time to time. Yeah. Hi everyone. <laughs> There's the camera. Hi everyone. <laughs> Are there one, anyone uh, online? Yeah, quite a lot of people. Two or three, we guess. <laughs> so this is Alexander, our CEO. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah he's just here to, to harass uh, us. Uh, uh, how's it work with the interaction? They get a good well, response? Yeah, yeah, we one? see the crowd, they're going wild. <laughs> yeah, okay. so it's a bit hard to, uh, to see from time to time. Yeah, I see. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll, we'll get the positive feedback afterwards, right. we presume. <laughs> so, thank you. What are you showing? Well, right now we're showing the moonlight. Right. Yeah. Yes, and we're going to show the apps. Yeah, but of course, yeah, yeah. of course. Yes. So we have a camera over here, so the guys can uh, see yeah. it. All, 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 all. Yeah, yeah. Mm? yeah. Uh, well, so. best of luck. Thank oh, you very much uh, you. with the presentation. I yeah. will, uh, you know, uh, I log in online and see. Uh, Please do. If we behave, yeah, I'll come yeah. the review later. <laughs> yeah. On. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Please do or not. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> see you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So moonlight, much better than uh, CEOs. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, as I mentioned, all the different features. Um, and yeah, so this little Bluetooth guy. Yeah, so can I... Uh, so the, the, the technical things of it is it's uh, battery charged. You use a micro USB. Uh, in transmitter mode, it will last... The battery will last for six mm. hours approximately. In receiver mode, up to 12 hours. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm? And the range we're talking about approximately 300 meters yeah 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 so let's see if we can use this little guy and for that we need an ipad 
so you can actually use an Android device for some of these features as well. We have developed an app ourselves that is called the CRMX Toolbox. It's, uh, it looks like this. It's a tool that you use to configure the, the moonlight. Uh, it's not a tool for control of lights or stuff like that. It's a tool that you use for uh, linking, unlinking and uh, upgrading software and so on. So this is a more of a configuration tool used for the moonlight. Uh, it's quite simple. You can connect to a device and uh, we're at Lumen Radio Office, so there are quite a lot of moonlights lying around here. Yep. Uh, you select, the, you can actually, since they're all main moonlight, you can actually identify it. We're going to use this guy. And if I press identify, it will stop blinking the LEDs. And there it is, that's the one I want to use. So now I know that, yeah, that's the one I used. Uh, I can cancel this blinking. Good to know, guys, is that this is, it will find all the, the Timo 2s slash moonlights within Bluetooth range. Yes. So now we're talking Bluetooth range. That could be five meters or it could be, uh, in best case, 100 meters. So. Yes, Yeah. exactly. So if I uh, choose my moonlight, this is the moonlight that I identified. It looks like this. We have the, the name of it, the software version and so on. You see the basic settings of it here. And if we go into device settings, there, this is where you can do some different changes. So we can go into, you can do the linking, unlinking. You can change it from receiver or transmitter. This guy is set up as a transmitter. So there's another transmitter here. We got two universes in the Nova. We got one over there. So multiple universes running wirelessly here. And you can set the output power as, as well. Change and the universe change color. Change the universe color. And also we have the DMX hold yep. option, which will um, hold the last scene DMX frame uh, even though it, it's disconnected from the Bluetooth. So you can actually set a DMX setting uh, to the moonlight and the moonlight will continuously output this frame even though you walk away from, uh, from the set or from the store or wherever you set a static show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, there is a pin code uh, that you should uh, use. Uh, if you're going to do it live. If you're going to do it live, <laughs> yeah. exactly, because and anyone can download the, the app. And of course, since Luma Radio is Luma Radio, everybody wants the Luma Radio app. They're gonna, in, they could then take your moonlight, uh, take charge of your moonlight and yeah. mess up your show. Yeah. Also, one so set pin yeah. code. Yeah, yeah, set pin code. Mm -hmm. Linking and unlinking. Yep. Yeah. So um, we're not going to do any settings here because we set it up nicely because it's already linked to the stereo tube back there. Oh. Failure number two or? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we'll see. So uh, yeah, this is Moonlight. Uh, let's go back and disconnect. That's important because you can only use it from one app at a time. Uh, so you disconnect from, uh, from our app and we're going to use uh, Luminaire. There are actually three apps available now with uh, support for Moonlight. Luminaire, Blackout Lighting Console, and Stage Light. Uh, we're going to use uh, Luminaire now because it's what we use at the office usually to set the lights. And this is what it looks like. I'm not going to go into details how to use this. It's, uh, it's a typical... Uh, they, they, have a, uh, they have, all, I think, all of uh, the, the app manufacturers have good tutorials on, yeah, on their own on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is not made by us. It's made by someone else that uses our Bluetooth API. If you have an app and want to put it in, feel free to do that because it's uh, free to integrate our... Uh, Moonlight, yeah. Bluetooth, yeah. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. It's set up here for a, for a tube and uh, it's quite simple to uh, connect. So in the settings, we have Bluetooth. It lists all the different devices that uh, are available and I'm gonna use the one called Moonlight Entrance here. That's all it takes. Now it's connected. And uh, right <laughs> now, this <laughs> iPad is connected to the Moonlight with Bluetooth. And the Moonlight is connected to the tube with wireless DMX, CRMX. So there are two networks running here. Uh, the Bluetooth is still only for short range um, and the wireless DMX is the long range where you can reach hundreds of meters instead. So bear that in mind, it's two different things. We're not talking Bluetooth to, to the light directly. Ta-da. Oh. So that's all it takes really. So. Um, yeah. This this did actually didn't work in our in our rehearsal. Then yeah, <laughs> I think we messed it up, of course. Yeah, but no. Yeah, so uh, this is the the app. It's quite simple to just do. Then I have some different scenes here. Of course, you can use the faders as well if you if you don't work the iPad upside down. Don't get cocky now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so that it's quite simple to just hook it up, hook it up, uh, Moonlight to the to uh, to the app, and then just set the lights that you feel comfortable with, uh, and um, then yeah, you can um, do whatever you want. And uh, when you're done, you can also disconnect, of course. That's a super mm. convenient tool that you just need an, an app, a Moonlight and your yeah. lights and then you're good to go. So this would actually be a perfectly wireless setup um, where I can carry a moonlight in my pocket and an iPad in my hand and I will walk around with being a wireless yeah. uh, CRMX network setting the lights as I f see fit. So it's a very wireless setup using uh, using the moonlight and, an and a pad. Yeah. And for, uh, it's also, we didn't say that, but of course you can daze the chain if you have a moonlight as a receiver in the, in the beginning of a, of a uh, yeah. A line, you just put, plug it into first uh, fixture and then daisy chain the rest, and you yeah. can control them all. Or if you have a, if you want, don't want to run a long cable, just use two moonlights, yeah. hook one up in each end, and uh, you're done. Yeah. You don't even have to use an app or anything. You can just feed it with DMX through, through wireless DMX there. So yeah. it's a very handy thing to just have in your pocket if you're working a lot with lights. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Be, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Radio, best practice. Well, I'll, I'll have uh, Joseph keep on talking. Yes. He, he has it much more. I'm an engineer. You're an engineer. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm just me. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, why does it work? Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, our CRMX is working on the 2.4 gigahertz band only. Uh, we have chosen that because it's perfect for uh, for these kind of transmissions. But we're not alone. We got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, microwave ovens. We had all kind of stuff working on the 2.4 band. Uh, and as you'll see shortly in, in a short while as well, it's very crowded, especially here at the office. So what we do, we have a patented technology that does this. This is why it works. We take the entire 2.4 spectrum and divide it into 80 channels. And 1,587.3, thanks Nicholas, <laughs> uh, times per second, okay. it scans the entire frequency spectrum uh, for, to see how the usage is. So it detects all the kind of interference and every other traffic that is on, there is on the spectrum and it chooses not to be where there is other interference. We move away from interference. Um, and that is that is a whole secret why it works. Yeah, that's a, I mean that's what's unique with it. It's uh, we don't want to get interrupted or interrupt other networks uh, to to coexist. That is uh, super important, and that's why it works in harsh environments. And to explain this, it's quite easy because in as we saw before in the supernova software, we can talk to the transmitter box and ask the transmitter box, what are you seeing in the frequency spectrum? So this is the live spectrum here at our office. Um, this is quite unusual one because it's crammed with interference. We have so many networks running here, it's uh, crazy. So it's a very difficult environment. What you see here is the green part. That's where we transmit our wireless DMX. So you see it's all over the spectrum. It's a bit here and it's a bit there. The red parts you see, that's interference that we have detected. And uh, the orange part are other networks that we know are working there that we're trying to stay away from. So what the CRMX uh, algorithm does, it's, it tries to, as much as possible, avoid other networks and move away from it. Yeah, so detect, identify and adapt to them. So instead mm -hmm. of, there's, oh, this is a frequency hopping spread spectrum, mm -hmm. there are others like it's quite so common, you, you yeah, have yeah. to jump around, yeah. of course, but... They jump around, but they, uh, most of the other ones out there, they use less channels, or they just jump around uh, randomly, mm. or without any intelligence. Yes. So what they could do, they, they could crash the, the Wi-Fi network, for example, or, mm. or whatever networks are out there. So mm. that's the, I think it's a uh, mm. strength important. from our side, of course. Yeah. So that, yeah, and that is why it's it's working reliably, even if um, new networks appear, even if um, there are many other networks. We try to stay away from every single other network and transmit where there is the least amount of interference. Yeah. And a good way to demonstrate this is to um, see how the how the algorithm would adapt to an environment which is perfect. So I'm not sure. Is it? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna actually ruin stuff here. So now I disconnected the antenna from the transmitter box that you see on the screen. So now the transmitter can't hear anything. It believes that the, there is no interference at all in the frequency spectrum. And this is the ideal transmission case for the, for the CRMX network. It will transmit on every single channel a single piece of information. Um, but as soon as we get back to reality, which is not always a happy place, <laughs> the algorithm immediately detects that, okay, there's a lot of networks here. I need to stay away from that. And uh, yeah, it moves to the, to the least interfered uh, areas. Yeah. And of course, you can't always sort of affect your radio environment. You can't always tell people to shut off Wi-Fi, and that's why this is important. If you have perfect control of your radio spectrum, then sure, but yeah, this adapts. And this is, um, yeah. We also have that. that yes, part. exactly. And sometimes you, um, you have another device. You have a wireless uh, focus unit. Those are quite popular these days, I've been told. And uh, this device uh, is very sensitive to interference, or it doesn't really adapt to the environment. And you need to tell the CRMX network to stay away from a certain part of the spectrum. You can actually do that. So over here you see all the different Wi-Fi channels and it says blocked Wi-Fi channels. This is, using this it's possible to block certain parts of the spectrum for the CRMX network. So we can actually say that, okay, I don't want the bottom part of the spectrum to be used by CRMX. I'm going to use it for something else. So now this is grayed out and there will be no transmissions of CRMX going here. We simply are not allowed. We uh, block it. Yeah. So, so then you can tell the, the, other, the other network guy that, okay, we're not using the lower channels of the, the 2.4. Yeah. They're good to go and you're not interfering. If they come up to you and say, hey, you're interfering our signal. Well, look at this. We're not. We we're actually not got there. the spectrum. There's someone else. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the same goes for if we... Uh, Enable this again, you will see that if we block the top part here where we have some transmission, it will immediately just go away and start using the lower part here. So, um, using this, you can actually do quite a bit of nifty work. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is uh, how you control the spectrum. If you have, uh, this is a two universe box, you can, it transmits two universes where they're screen now. If you want to use more universes, you can get another box and put it up. Uh, but they are not aware of each other, so um, they will try to stay away from each other. But you can al also make sure that, okay, I want one box to use the upper part of the spectrum and one box to use the lower part of the spectrum by blocking out from, uh, from each other so that you're, you're certain that they won't interfere each other. Um, yeah, we have had uh, some. Uh, my record were, were 26 universes. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's not good enough. So, no, of course, so my guy, said, he, yeah. he, he had 40 wireless universes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. it is possible to have a lot of wireless universes, but you need to know what you're doing. You can't just put up 20 boxes and no. use uh, 40 uh, wireless universes. You need to do some spectrum control, and you also need to make sure that you you probably won't be using direct, um, omnidirectional antennas. You're probably going to use directional to certain different parts. Yep. Um, and um, yeah, because antennas, that's another important part that we yeah. should go through. Yeah. Can you please explain why you should not point the antennas? Yeah, and how you should align them. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the beam uh, of an of a omnidir omnidirectional antenna it's like an uh, apple shape, <coughs> so you have 360 degrees. I prefer to say donut. But donut, yeah, 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 that's fine. I can see that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it's like this, around 360 degrees. So nothing is coming out from here. Nothing is coming out from here. Uh, so when aligning the antennas, uh, you can go like so. We can go like like so, because we have the donut apple uh, shape. We can go, uh, is there another? We cannot go like this. No, 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 no. That's a, since That's that, a big no, no. And yeah. it's quite common that people think that it's sort of an aiming device. It's not. No. Don't aim with it. No. <laughs> uh, so, so alignment should be like this. Can also be like so. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, important uh, also is that when you use high gain antennas, they are a little bit more sensitive of uh, alignment because they just push the, the the apple becomes a donut. Ah, ah oh, so, sorry. so from sorry, the beginning yeah. we have a shape like this, and with a, with a high gain we have a little a more donut shaped. And a directional antenna. Uh, yeah, and that's even uh, that's even more important to align them because you have a 65, 34 degree, yeah. Yeah. So shape. you have yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, really important to align them. Mm -hmm. And also placement of the antennas. This is yeah, quite yeah, please. this is quite important because mm -hmm. if you're if you're working on a set or you're doing some lights, uh, you probably have this close to your computer. Uh, even might put it behind the screen or something like that. Don't do that because the radio signal gets attenuated quite quickly if you put it uh, through certain materials. Yeah, people. That's probably one of the worst things to try to transmit through. Yeah. So if you have a crowd, if you have people on the set, if something like that, put the antennas above head height, it's easier yeah. to demonstrate. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so high above people's, uh, well, high above the audience, for example. Yes. They also, of course, we have, uh, we have, uh, if you need it, we, there's also uh, low layer. Extension low cables. Low cables, yeah. yeah. So you can actually disconnect the antenna, put a cable in between. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, you need to stay away from um, certain materials. Metal. Metal. Don't put it near metal. It will be. It will bounce. It will be attenuated. It's yeah. yeah. Concrete. Yeah. It will be the same there. It's, yeah. Sometimes it might help you, but don't don't, don't do count on it. Rely on it. Yeah. You know? So st try to stay away. Put place the antenna uh, as far away as possible from from uh, from that surface. Concrete. Mm -hmm. Uh, glass, mm -hmm. steel. Uh, yeah. Any questions about it? If you are feeling unsure about it, mm -hmm. please uh, contact your local yeah. distributor or send us an email and we'll get back. Plastics, to you. usually quite fine. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, mm? uh, is there, uh, yeah, should we uh, get into pitfalls? Yes, we're, we're sure. already in the pitfalls since yeah, we started exactly. off with the uh, attenuation and also the alignment. That is yeah. probably the most. The alignment is the most yeah, common, common problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Uh, and also the bouncing. Uh, we had mm -hmm. a project in a big uh, hotel in in Singapore where where they placed the transmitter on top of the building and had a receiver in the bottom. It was between two uh, uh, bodies, two house bodies or towers. Uh, towers, yeah. Yeah. So they had had a three second latency on that project. So. But the signal were bouncing like like so. Yeah. So instead, they changed to a directional antenna. It was good to go. Mm. Uh, so that's one one uh, or probably the only reason. Yeah, uh, it's very common with uh, antenna placement yeah. Yeah. problems. So that if you yeah make sure to place it up high, it should be in line of sight. The antennas. That's yeah. the ideal case. It, the antennas should be able to see each other. And remember the apple shape or donut shape. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Don't. Yeah, uh, we also have some uh, the supernova management software. Uh, mm -hmm. If you can't uh, get that work, uh, mm -hmm. disable Wi-Fi. It's uh, also one of the most common questions. Uh, yeah, I would say. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. for we asked our field application engineers what what. What are you guys getting from on the support portal, which is mm -hmm. really convenient for you guys to use? Our Luminator.com, and then you have a support. Uh, yeah. Please use that one; it's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, so if yeah, yeah, we asked them what what are the most common problems that you get nowadays. Uh, it's not it's not always uh, antenna placement anymore. No? Since we introduced the moonlight, we have uh, had some new issues of common problems. Yeah. And the most common problem with the moonlight is that you manage to disable Bluetooth. Yeah. 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 So it's possible using the one button interface. It states in the manual how to do it. You can see on the web page how to do it. But it's, it is possible to actually disable Bluetooth on the device. Yeah. And if you do that, you won't be able to see it in any kind of software. No. And um, yeah. So make sure you have a blue LED blinking. Yeah. yeah that, mm -hmm. is, uh, that is vital if you want to use Bluetooth. Yeah, mm -hmm. we will probably come up with a tutorial of the moonlight of the boxes and so on later on. Yeah, uh, for you just on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. 
And also, uh, if you use the, the, an app, for example, I use the Toolbox uh, app for the, for the Moonlight. When I'm done with it, make sure you disconnect. Because only one app can use the Moonlight at the time. It's Bluetooth Low en Energy. Yeah. So you need to disconnect if you want to use it in a different app. Yeah. Otherwise, the, the old app will sort of keep the connection. And don't connect it in the settings. Yeah, yeah. In the... In the, in the operating system. In no. the, you're not supposed to do pairing like you do with a pair of headphones or stuff like that. That's not how you use it. Uh, you use it directly in the app. You just open up an app and you will see the list of uh, compatible devices. Yeah. So just go into the app and you will see the Moonlight. Don't try to pair it with operating system. That's not the right way. Yeah. Mm. That's um, the most common problems, I'd yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. And if you find anything else or have issues, use the support portal because we have three engineers working yeah. with this. Uh, constantly responding to both very simple and very complex cases. Yeah. Uh, we know there are certain uh, certain issues uh, that we can easily identify and help you with. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the good thing with the TMO2 radio module, which is in, inside of Moonlight, mm -hmm. uh, is that it's, it's a platform. So it will constantly be updated and there come new fir firmwares. Uh, so, yeah, you will mm -hmm. get a notification in the CRMX Toolbox app Mm. It's a, there's a new firmware update available. Yes. And so maybe we, we can share, share, just show you guys uh, where you can find that. Uh, dun, yep. So if we Good go... Good luck using it upside down. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. So in here... Uh, yeah, to use the beta software with all the latest and greatest features. Yeah. Yeah, you need to go into the settings. You have it up here. You saw yeah. where it pushed up here, bam, and down here use uh, beta firmwares. Then you get all the nifty features yeah. that we release. Yeah. Uh, before and before they become official, be more or yeah. less. Yeah. Before before we know they're stable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there might be some glitches, but uh, yeah. yeah, you can try that. Yeah. Uh, and also, let's see. No, maybe we had one connected. No. I'm just going to show you a quickie. Uh, don't break anything. I will break everything. Also, if you'll see it, yeah, down here, you will see update uh, firmware. Uh, that yeah, that will be highlighted when, when there's a new version out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Push that and update it. Yeah. Yes, Great. sir, Colonel Sir. Mm -hmm. um, and um, if you have any questions, yeah. you should ask them uh, right away because then we'll uh, be able to see them. Um, other than that, I think we're pretty much done. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, if yeah, uh, any any questions, just uh, place them on the on YouTube or send us an email. Uh, you find our contacts in uh, on, the on our web yeah. website or the best way is, of course, if uh, if uh, you contact your local distributor, they're all also on do under the on our website under support. You'll find the distributors. Mm all over the world um, yeah yeah mm. I think that's it yeah so um, this uh, th this will of course be be uh, you can watch this later we'll have it on YouTube you probably are watching this later as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds or so yeah and yeah and that's all for us for uh, this uh, webinar yeah and thank you very um, much. thanks for watching if you want to know more about our stuff or so Hook us up, send us an email, use social media, whatever you feel suitable. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you um, some other time, virtual or live. Yeah. yeah. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.